guys I am down in my basement right now and working on our kitchen cabinet doors we live in a 1965 house and it has got just plain just flat cabinet doors um, just very blah nothing to them no um, trim on the top of them or anything to make them look more modern um, as you can see in the past we've tried painting them um, which this is sanded but beforehand we had them painted and it just didn't do much for the cabinets they just looked awful so I have come up with a method of fixing these that I think it's gonna make them look wonderful um, I'm gonna make these into shaker style cabinet doors so this is one that I'm working on right now I've done about 11 of them so far but um, this is the one that I'm working on today um, and let me show you what I'm going for. Here is one. I don't know if you can see that good enough, but here is a cabinet door that I just finished putting the trim on the front of it. Our cabinet doors, which I don't know if you can see that, are old and they have a rounded beveled edge. So with this cabinet door, it's very hard to line up square trim, you know, on the on the edges of it and get it perfectly straight. So what I have done is, when I did this particular door here, um, we went ahead and pre-cut all of the wood, um, my husband did, and um, you know we measured the, the, the length of the door on the side and then the middle parts um, to make a perfect rectangle. And so, basically we lined it up, we had to eye it really on the first door line it up with the edge which I know it's really hard to see in here but we had to kind of like find the edge of the door you know on the top and then line up the square edge of the wood trim for example line that up you know to meet the corner down here and um, the edge and as you know um, or you may not know but um, cabinet doors to replace them just for the cabinet doors are very expensive we have 22 cabinet doors and that would total to be close to a thousand dollars to replace these if you had them custom made which would you would absolutely have to do um, so anyways um, and these are solid wood I would really hate to lose these because these are cedar oak um, or cedar wood of some sort um, cabinet doors they're solid and so are the frames upstairs so we have decided to make do with what we have and I absolutely love the shaker style cabinet door and has and I have always wanted them and that is what I have decided to make them into so yeah I really like um, I know a lot of cabinet doors would be a lot easier for a lot of people who have square edges on their doors already instead of beveled edges to just line it up and go from there it would it would probably save you tons and tons of time but because ours is beveled we have really had to eye it and that's really what takes so long is making sure it's perfectly straight so if you have beveled edges um, on your flat cabinet doors and you do have doors that are that are like these from the 1960s um, then this is a method I would recommend trying um, like I said, you just have to do your first door, eye it, and once you glue the boards on and then nail bride them in, then you can use this as a template for the next door. It's kind of like a um, um, conveyor belt in a factory. You do one, get it perfect, and then you copy all the rest of the doors to that one. Now, every door is a different length. So um, the cabinets that we have upstairs, you know, this, the doors that are side by side, pretty much are um, easy to do but then you'll get some that are longer than the other ones so I would suggest on every door that is a different size or length um, to just you know start out like this one eye it and then copy the one that's next to it that um, is the same size if that makes any sense I'm not very good at explaining stuff but anyway so um, yeah I'm going to show you um, now how I I'm going to do this door. I've done uh, six doors today, so I'm going to, after I finish this one, I'm going to stop for the day, um, and hopefully I can get the rest of the 
the other 11 of them done you know before the end of the week but um, I'm gonna show you how I do this and um, one thing really fast if your doors already have like um, a clear coat on it if it's if it's got a glossy paint anything like that you will have to sand your doors and always go with the grain of the wood um, because whether you have paint on it or not you always want to go with the grain of the wood because otherwise it leaves scratch marks and that's just not good sometimes that can show up on the finished paint project and these will be painted white um, I'm not going with a darker color because you've seen the kitchen um, if you are new to my channel um, there are some previous videos of our kitchen so it is a galley style kitchen um, if you're new to the channel and you haven't seen my video then check out the previous videos on the backsplash and you can get an idea of what our kitchen looks like but it's a small kitchen and this really dark um, brown color is just it just made the kitchen look really really small so we're going with all whites with brand new satin nickel um, handles and so I think it's gonna look really good so anyways enough babbling um, let's get on to this door I'm gonna just adjust the camera here so that you guys can see what I'm doing and here we go okay first things first I'm going to adjust this camera to kind of um, give you guys an idea of how I line up this door to match the bottom trim of this door I've got these on shoe boxes um, the same size shoe boxes because if you have different sizes of course it's not going to line up evenly but um, I'm going to show you what I do my method of what I do to line these up because they are going to be sitting side by side on the frames of the cabinets so what I do is I slide the shoe box with this door that's unfinished up next to this one and I make sure that the bottom edge matches with the bottom edge of this these are the bottom cabinet doors so honestly on the bottom cabinet doors you really want to look at the top edges to make sure they line up because you're not going to see on the bottom cabinets the bottom what they're going to look like you're really when you're looking down going to see the top so on the bottom cabinet doors you want to make sure that the corners line up with each other if you're working on the top cabinet doors then you want to make sure that the bottom ones line up because when you look up you're going to see the bottom and not the top so I hope that makes some sense so let me walk around to the other side and make sure this cabinet lines up with this one okay so it does line up I like to get these flush side by side together and then once that is done then I can go ahead and start putting the actual boards on here okay what I usually tend to do on your boards you want to make sure that uh, you do the side that looks the best if there's any like chips where you you know you cut it with the miter saw um, on the edges or anything like that you want to make sure that whatever side is jagged or whatnot you want to face that downward so you don't actually see it on the top so to me um, I would have to say that this side looks the best out of both sides so I'm gonna just kinda eye this and line it up with the edge and I start here at the top um, of the cabinet door edge because like I said that's the what you're gonna see um, when you're looking down since this is a bottom cabinet door that's what's gonna show more so than the bottom edge and see this is what I'm saying you really just have to eye it and make sure it lines up with the door next to it so once I do this I'm gonna pull this out a little bit the shoe box I mean it's easy just to slide the box put your hand under and slide the box back a little bit um, so I'm gonna just see if this end lines up with this one and then what I do is I take 
some of these clamps. You can get these at Lowe's. I bought these at Lowe's, and you also can get these at Home Depot. I got mine at Lowe's, and I like these. These are the Irwin Quick Grip, and um, they've got metal ones, but these are just so much better. So it's worth the extra money to spend to get the better quality ones because it's going to last you longer. So what I do is I just take them and I line it up and then I squeeze it. And you want to hold you want to hold it in the middle so it doesn't slide. And then once that edge is lined up, I will come over to the ends over here. And I will do the same another one on this side. And if you feel like it's off at all, like if this edge looks like it's thinner than the side edge here, you know, at the top, then you can just release this. And that one down there is clamped. So just adjust it to however, however much you need to. And then um, when you get it to where exactly where you want it, then you can reclamp it back down. Okay? So that's number one. Then I like to start with the shorter pieces. These are the middle pieces that go right through here. And check again um, for which side looks better. Um, and I don't know if you can see this or not, but this edge right here is kind of like tattered from the saw. So I'm going to flip it over to this edge because it's cleaner. It's got a cleaner cut on it. And I'm going to line that up. And I like for my edges to line up perfectly with the bottom edge of the first board, okay? So if it lines up there, again, you have to check because I have beveled edges. If it was squared off, it'd be so much easier just to line it up on the squared edge, but unfortunately mine's not. So I line it up, you know, with the bottom of that and make sure that the edge is right at the edge of the part that's going downward, you know, the beveled part right here. I line this up uh, right before it slopes down into a beveled edge. And when I feel that that is right where I want it to be, then I go ahead and take another clamp. Now I have four of these clamps. Um, and you really, I mean, I probably could have used five, but I got four. And um, I say to get five just because it'd be good to have an extra one sometimes when you have all four, four corners um, holding them in place and then you know you need a fifth one in case you glue one of these down and you really don't want to take up one of the corner edge ones so I would suggest getting five or six of them if you needed but a minimum four of these clamps so so let me scoot you over so you can now see a little bit better Sorry, I have to adjust the camera as I go. Okay, that's better. There we go. Okay, so I do the two. I do the first long one first, then I do the two middle ones because those are going to anchor the last one and keep it straight, completely straight. So as you can see, now I've got all four of my um, clamps use in use right now. This would be ideal for when I needed the fifth one, but unfortunately I don't have a fifth one, so I have to make do with what I have. Um, okay, and so this is the last piece, so can you see that? Let me make sure. Yes. So I'm going to line that up with the edge. Whoops. Sorry, I just moved the camera. That is not what I wanted to do. There we go. So I just line that up with the edge. And like I said, I'm out of clamps. I can't clamp anything else down. So now it's time to make an adjustment. I don't feel like this edge over here is going to be um, this edge. Let me let me rephrase this. This side down here is thinner on the beveled part than it is up here, which means that I need to move this top section of this board over this way. So I'm going to unclamp this one. And I'm going to unclamp this one, and I'm going to just barely move this over a little bit. 
to make it a little bit more where I need it to be. And this is what I say when I say you have to eye them. Okay. And then I readjust this one to line it up. And then I, what I do here is um, I take another clamp and I actually clamp this right here together. So this one's in place right now so that this first piece don't slide. I'm actually going to take this at an angle and I'm going to kind of clamp it to where you can actually see um, if it's still lining up on the edge right here. And that way, now everything lines up to where I need it to be. And once that's tightened, you know, this piece isn't going to move and this piece isn't going to move because these t this clamp is holding both pieces together. And then I can unloosen this one and reuse it on this section right here. Okay. Now, I'm going to unloosen this one. I know it's a lot of moving around and stuff, but once you get the hang of it, it's really not so bad. And honestly, guys, this saves hundreds of dollars, and you can recycle what you already have and make it look like custom cabinets. So why go out to Lowe's, Home Depot, or Cabinet Tree Place and buy new stuff when you can refurbish what you've got? Okay. So, this is all lined up, actually on this part right here, probably should have just done this right here. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to take this off. These three, I've got um, all these in place. I'm going to move this over. I'm going to push this back over to make sure that it lines up with my other cabinet door because when these are hung you want the, the, the actual top and bottom to line up so that you don't have one cabinet off from the other one. And as you can see, side by side they both line up perfectly. Finished one minus painting and spackling and so forth and working on this one. Okay, so I'm going to now slide this box over a little bit so I can actually have some room in between. And I'm going to take this piece off. These, these other pieces are already, um, are already in place with the clasps, so they're not going anywhere. So my next step is going to be to glue the back of this. And I am actually using Gorilla Gorilla wood glue. A little bit goes a long way. So what I end up doing, this is the front of the piece. I flip it over, open the glue, and then I take a little swirly or a little swivelly line of glue so that it doesn't come out on the edges. You want to do it in the middle because too much will come out on the edges and that's not what you want to do. And then I take this and I put it on the edge right next to the piece of wood that's clasped down so that you can make sure these are lined up. And you definitely want to make sure that they are perfectly lined up because this glue dries exceptionally fast. I'm sorry if my voice is kind of muffled. Um, I'm walking around the table as I am speaking to you working on this. Okay, so that is on it has to dry so now that that's in place I'm going to take one of these that was clasped down to this one right here and I want to try to glue the or not glue I'm sorry I want to try to clasp this in place without it moving the glue is very slippery and it can make the, the board move so you want to make sure that it doesn't move because the edges won't line up properly if it does 
So that's glued on and it's kind of just holding it down so that it can start to dry in place. And honestly guys, this glue dries within like five minutes. It takes absolutely no time. Same for this side. I'm just going to kind of lightly hold this down so it doesn't move. And that way I give it about maybe two minutes, let this part dry, and then I start gluing the two middle sections on, and then I glue the last piece on after these two middle pieces dry. Okay, so now I have got all of my pieces glued on. I need to adjust the camera, so hold on just a second. There we go. And what I'm going to do next, um, now that all of the pieces are glued on, um, some of these are still drying. Um, so the one that's been on the longest, I'm going to go ahead and nail brad those in place. Um, some of you may ask, why are you nail bradding it on top of gluing it? Well, it just gives it more support um, um, so that it, it does not come up later on. You want to make sure that it stays in place. The glue gives it its first support but the nail brad gives it extra support. So you want to make sure that you do both to keep it sturdy so that you don't ever have any problems with it coming off. So let me get the nail brad gun and let's go ahead and nail some nails into this. Let me just make a note right here. Let me just stop and make a note for you guys. These right here, you have to be careful if you have beveled edges. Now, if you have squared edges, it's not so much of an issue. But let me say that if you have a beveled edge door, you do not want to nail the actual nail close to the lip, which is the beveled parts. Because this part right here, I, I can't flip it over right now, but it can actually go through the beveled parts and that part sits against your frame because at the bottom of this is actually boxed in and if you nail this right at the edge it's going to go through the beveled part and it's going to start scratching your door frame so you want to make sure that your nail brad is over enough to where it's not going to go through the thinner parts of the actual lip let me show you an example on the door here that's completely done. Let me flip this over and that way you can understand what I'm talking about. So on our doors here, this part goes into the actual cabinet. So you can see here there's an edge that fits inside the cabinet and this is just the extra part that sits on the outside. So if you were to nail a brad nail through the edge of the beveled parts, it, the, the back of the nail brad is going to come through this, scratching up your frame that you paint on your cabinets. So you want to make sure that you go over enough to where it goes inside of the thicker wood and doesn't go through the wood. Uh, we got three quarter inch nails. Um, that's another thing I forgot to mention. Um, you want to determine if, um, for your nail brad gun the thickness the thickest part of your wood, including how thick your actual trim is, which this is a quarter inch thick, uh, and these come uh, pre-cut already at Lowe's. Um, so they're a quarter inch thick by two inches wide. Of course you can do whatever width you'd like, but I like the two inch wide ones. Um, and then I'm not sure how thick the actual door is itself. Um, I would maybe say maybe a half an inch. I'm really bad at measurements. Um, but either way, um, you just want to make sure that you keep in mind um, that whatever thickness it is, you get the right nail, nails for your nail brad gun that does not make the actual nail go through the thickest part of the wood because that would be really bad if it went through. Um, to the back of the door and then you had a nail sticking through the back of the door. It would just that wouldn't be good at all. So anyway, we use we use three quarters of an inch um, nails for for this wood. So yeah.
and I will flip the door around in just a minute and do that in because I can't reach that far over there. I've got to take those clasps off anyways, or clamps, I should say. If you ever have a, um, a nail that doesn't go all the way through the wood, like it goes all the way through and you have just a little bit of a head sticking up, you can take your hammer and lightly um, try to hit it back in. Um, you don't want to hit it too hard because you don't want to dent the wood. This is soft wood. Um, it's not thick like the actual cabinet door, so you got to be careful with it. But um, you can kind of ha hammer these in a little bit. Now, if it comes where it bends and stuff, you'll have to take that out. And then, of course, re-nail it back in once you get it out. Okay, guys, that is pretty much it. Um, so that is basically how you do. Take a flat cabinet door and make it into a absolutely fabulous style shaker cabinet door. Um, let me just take you around here. Some cabinet doors you're going to have where not every piece of wood is perfect. There, it's just not. Every edge is going to be a little off. In situations, um, by the way, let me show you this. I don't know if you can see this up close. This is where a nail brad did not go in all the way, and you want it to go in, and these holes you're going to eventually go ahead and either um, put some wood filler in it, or you can actually put a little bit of caulk in it, because these aren't very deep, so you can do caulk, um, paintable caulk for that matter. But um, for the ones that are like this, this is the one that you take your hammer, let me just grab it and you want to hammer it back in and make sure that you're it's sitting on the table good okay so that that's about as good as it's gonna get I hammered it as as much as I could it's still barely sticking up it if you run your finger over it it still feels flat so I'm not worried about that I will just caulk that a little bit um, or wood fill it up just a little bit probably caulk it and what I was saying is this crack right here you can see that this one's flush but this one on the other hand has got a crack so you can actually when you get done putting your pieces together gluing them on nail brighting them together then you can go back before you paint it and fill in any cracks like this with either wood filler or caulk I would recommend caulk because then you're gonna have to sand the wood and you don't want to mess up the grain of wood that's already there because sanding it can make this part thinner on the sides than this in the middle so I'm going to caulk it um, that's my preference but you guys can do whatever you'd like so anyway that is how you make a blah flat door into a fabulous shaker style cabinet door I mean guys it's it's not hard it is time consuming because you do have to spend time on it but Come on, really? I mean, do you want to spend hundreds of dollars when you can just, you know, take what you have and refurbish it? Not me. So, <laughs> anyway, um, and let me give you a peek of the other doors that I have worked on today. Okay, this one here that I'm pointing to, um, my husband has to retrim the wood on that because it's a little bit, it's like a quarter of an inch uh, too long. This door here is its partner that it lines up with upstairs on the on the kitchen cabinets. But um, like I said, the the longer strips are a quarter of an inch longer than these that it's supposed to line up next to. So that's on hold until he gets back into town. Excuse the mess. We've been working down here. We've got water bottles and pieces of sheetrock and stuff where we've been renovating. But uh, anyway, um, you can see this is kind of funny. The, we went from the oaky color to an espresso and um, hated it, hated every bit of it. Um, and then we tried the Rust-Oleum Transformation Kit um, and see, I think it was called Seaside or something like that. 
which we sanded these. It's not very good uh, quality showing you this, but either way, that color looked awful too. So we have just decided to re completely vamp these and make them white to brighten up the kitchen, to make them look fabulous. And I am so excited um, knowing that this is actually going well because I've been really nervous about doing the trim on the front of these um, before I started on it because once you do the glue and the nail bratting, your doors are pretty much unfixable. So um, keep that in mind. Once these are on, they're on. And you have to make that choice, you know, beforehand. You want to make sure that that's what you want to do. This is what we wanted to do. Um, so we took a risk. And let me just say, guys, it turns out beautiful. Um, that, of course, that's the grain of the wood. It looks like it's got a big crack in it, but that's just the dark part of the wood. So I'm going to prime these, I'm going to paint them white, and put new silver handles on them, and it's going to look fabulous. So that is my easy method of turning a blah, flat door kitchen cabinet into an absolutely stunning shaker cabinet doors. And when these are completely finished, I will put these up on YouTube for you guys to see the painted, finished, hung product. But it will probably be at least a couple weeks from now, because my husband is out of town. Last thing I completely forgot to tell you guys, I mentioned that, um, you want to make sure that before you take all your cabinet doors off that you number them either by letters or numbers. Um, what we did when we ended up pre-cutting all of these pieces of wood before we started gluing them on or nail brighting them on is we would actually cut it per cabinet door and then we would number all four pieces to which cabinet door it went to. Um, I know that doesn't make any sense. We made the grave mistake, you guys, of taking all the cabinet doors off without numbering them or labeling them to know which door goes where. We are so lucky that all of our cabinets upstairs are different sizes minus its partner. So the only way I figured out how to know which cabinet door was which was to measure the inside of the frames upstairs and compare them to the back of the cabinet door indents that goes on the back of the cab that goes inside of the cabinet door um, and luckily we got very lucky with ours that all the cabinet doors were different sizes and there wasn't many that were the same exact size so we were very lucky on that make sure when you take your cabinet doors off you label them a b c d or one two three four to know which cabinet doors go where and then when you cut your pieces you want to also number like you want to keep all four pieces together and then number them like one for you know four pieces and then two for the second four and then three for the second four you get it so I wanted to point that out and let you know that so make sure to do that and also when you finally glue these on you want to make sure that you label which is the bottom let me get my pen my sharpie which is the bottom and which is the actual top. So what I do is I have this on here, I just leave it on there and I just put a B for bottom because that's the bottom of the cabinet door. Um, and my last thing on this is when you go to, um, when you have cabinet doors and you want to hide, you know, the old handle holes and stuff, if your cabinet door handles were on the edge of either side, the great part about the two inch wood that I got was that it covers up your previous handle holes. So you don't have to worry about filling those in because you're not going to see them once you put the trim on. So that is a huge plus. And you won't see the hinges either because, um, like I said, they the wood covers it up. So keep that in mind. But um, I made a template, you guys, before um, I started any of this. I don't know if you can see this. It's kind of hard to see in here. but. Um, for example, these are our top cabinets upstairs, and I went ahead and made a template of the two top on this side, and I put what side the hinges were on, you know? Um, and that way, when I got over here to my cabinet doors, before I glued these on, you can flip the cabinets around to know, should cabinet A be the um, one that goes on the left, or cabinet B, you know, depending on what side the hinges are on. So that's another thing. Make a template of, of where your hinges are, on what side of each cabinet door, um, and which cabinet doors go where, um, and you should be set to go. Um, I hope that makes sense. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up, and 
Yeah.